for the wonderful turnout and thank you for McDermott's for having us and I'll turn it over to Jane House. So here we go. Okay. We are one two punch, aren't we? Good morning. Thank you for being here too and thank you to Jody. Doesn't she do a wonderful job? Um, yes. She's got us livened up. And Lord knows we needed it, didn't we? <laughs> so again, um, it's nice of you to be here. Um, it's nice to be able to um, showcase our educational systems this morning. We're back to school, and uh, isn't that exciting? We're not sure for how long, <laughs> but we are back to school. And um, I, don't, I know each of you are like me. Uh, you're very, very proud of Alma for their educational institution and uh, what they mean to our community. And we have the very best yes. leadership and they're with us today and I, I can't thank them enough for going all summer long, and no breaks hardly, um, since fall break when school started, or when spring break when school started, spring break was over, you know. So um, they have worked tirelessly to get us back going make us safe, um, get our kids back into activities and things. And so I'm just really, really proud of them and proud to be a part of, of their works and all that they do. Um, Mr. Argo is with us. And uh, uh, Tim is um, not new to our community as we help raise him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we sent him to the city to get a little bit refined. Yeah. And uh, we're so thankful that he and his family came back to Alva. He's been in the education field for several years. He's not new to it, but he is fairly new to the office of superintendent. And um, he's doing a fantastic job of uh, hiring the best staff in the country. So I'm going to quit talking, and I'm going to turn it over to him and let him uh, talk to us a little bit about and then. Dr. Cunningham, I'll introduce her. If, if, I don't know whether you have some staff here uh, to introduce, but or are you just are you kind of, I'm, I'm here on my own. That's good. <laughs> yeah, can you see him better there, or can you see him better from here? Yeah. I think maybe. Would you like up here? Right here, I'll be willing to do it there. Right here, I think. Yeah. That, that sun, so I was looking at you, that sun was just glaring. There's a lot of things that were flat, that's right. Well, I wasn't going to go there. I'm trying to grow it, but it's not working. <laughs> So again, we're excited. Uh, it has been a, a long time coming to, to get back to where we uh, have wanted to be, and that's with kids. Um, it has been a challenging, uh, gosh, year, really, um, working, working our way uh, back into school. I want to start really talking about our partnerships. Um, Northwest Tech and Northwestern are absolutely critical to our public schools. And, and their leadership, uh, to be able to meet with, with leaders at different institutions and talk about how we're going to work our way through this is critical. And, and so I'm appreciative of Dr. Han Hannaford, uh, Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Pakey, they just, anytime we've needed something, we reach out to them and we get an answer. And we're able to meet and talk about what we're doing. Um, and that's not unique just to this. Uh, Dr. Hannifer and I spent many mornings over the last few years driving and wondering, are we going to have school? And what are we going to do with school when you have that inclement weather? And so um, this has kind of felt like at times this is one of those uh, snow days and those tough decisions. How are we going to get through it? And I want you to know that, and I think that, that they would agree with me and the, and the career tech would agree, we, we fully recognize how important it is to have our kids in classrooms. And, and not only is it important for our kids, because we believe that um, in our classrooms our kids are safest and, and our kids are going to get the education they're provided, but um, it's important for our economy, it's important for our parents to be able to go to work, um, and it's important for our teachers and our staff to have that interaction with their kids. And so um, just know that as we move forward with this, any decision to to not have school is certainly not uh, taken lightly, uh, whether it's snow or, or um, COVID-19 positive cases. We certainly uh, 
take a, take, take a lot of time and have a lot of discussions on that. So I thought I might just talk a little bit about how we came to this point and, and how we, we got our doors back open and, and the partnerships with the Career Tech and Northwestern have been critical, but um, local medical professionals, we are so fortunate to live in a community um, where our doctors have reached out to us and helped us plan how to get back in school. And um, their advisement, uh, their time from uh, Mr. Logston, Dr. Kinsey, um, a nurse on staff, Dixie Meyer, has, has um, given us a lot of great input, um, Candace Allen. Um, so we're just really fortunate to have those local medical people that have helped us out because this is something that obviously we're not, we weren't ready for and, and we don't have the answers to. And so they really helped us develop this plan um, really the first couple of weeks in July. And, and we were really, hesitant is not the word, but we didn't want to rush anything out to our community because at the time, things were changing so rapidly that any decision that was made, I might have to turn around and change that decision. I felt like it was really important that um, we took our time and we made the best decision uh, for our kids and our teachers and, and our families. And so um, we brought teachers in in the middle of July um, and met with them and ask them, what, what do you need to feel safe? Um, what ideas do you have? You're in there every day. Tell us what we, what we should be doing and how this should look. And they've been wonderful. Um, they had great ideas. Um, you know, school maybe doesn't look uh, like it did a year ago. Um, we've made some adjustments to the cafeteria and where we eat. And, and, uh, uh, we have made some adjustments with how we uh, switch classes and move from room to room. Um, obviously, face coverings is different than we've ever been. Uh, but I want you to know, the first day uh, of school last week on Thursday, um, I went up to the high school just to see kids. And not a problem. Um, our kids are very resilient. Um, they, uh, they were just excited to be back in the building. And so uh, that, was, that was good to see. Um, so, so we've had a good start to the year. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we hope for each week is that um, we can have student activities. Our kids need those activities. And so one of the things that we've implemented, um, before any event, we have a checklist that we go through. And it starts with our sponsors, uh, myself, uh, our principals, and we begin contacting the schools that we travel to or that are traveling to us. And we talk to them about, um, you know, what's it like in your school? What have you done uh, to mitigate uh, flu, to mitigate COVID-19? Um, do you have any kids in quarantine? Um, and, and have those discussions. And I have to be honest with you, schools have been great. Um, there's been really good communication. And we feel really confident when we've allowed our kids to participate in any activities that they've been safe. And so we hope it continues that way. Um, it's, uh, it's just really important for our kids to have that hook in school, um, and that's those student activities. Um, so administration, our, our site principals have been fantastic. Our sponsors, um, coaches have been great. Uh, communicating, um, looking at, at what's going on at other schools and looking at what's going on in our school to be able to move forward with programs. Um, I want to explain just a little bit about uh, the color code system for Alba Public Schools. So um, when we look at the color code system, the COVID-19 alert system, and it goes green, yellow, orange one, orange two, and red, um, I just want people to understand that that's not the sole basis for any decision to, to have school or not have school, because there's a lot of factors that will go into that. And um, anytime we have a discussion, um, you know, my first phone call is to um, our regional health director, and they've been great. And, and they are overwhelmed as we are overwhelmed. And so they, they have done a great job and, and have always communicated really well with me. So very thankful for our, our uh, county and, and regional health department. They've done a really good job. And so what we do when we look at that, um, that alert system is, it may change colors, but we, before we decide that we're not going to have an activity or school, we want to have a discussion with our local medical professionals, and then we also want to look at what is, it, what is the case count of COVID in our community. Because 
we don't want to make a decision to not have school, um, put a burden on parents, change routine if there are problems, um, whether it be at Northwestern, whether it be at Bill Johnson, um, whether it be at another community in our county. And so um, I have lots of people ask me, I had a, a parent call me a week ago and said, well, when will you decide to cancel school? And I said, well, I really can't tell you when that will be because um, everything is case by case. And so every day um, we look at it and we have those discussions and we, we talk to other administrators and, and it's not black and white. And that's probably, I think, been the most difficult part of this process is nothing about this has been black and white. Everything is, has been on an individual and case by case basis. And so um, just know that um, each day we have those discussions and, and uh, uh, it's been challenging, but I think it's, uh, I think with anything like this, you have a, an opportunity to improve. And I can tell you from a, it feels like from my perspective, administratively, and even from our teachers, the communication amongst everyone is so much better uh, because we all want to stay in school. And, and so um, they've done a great job. Um, just a little bit about uh, our enrollment. Um, we offered three different options this year. We felt like it was really important um, for our families to have a, a complete virtual option if they did not feel safe coming to school. And so um, we have over 40 students that have taken advantage of that option. Uh, we have 975 students in our buildings, and that's down about 40 students. Um, we lost some to uh, Epic online and to homeschooling. Um, we've lost some to moving, about 40 to moving, but um, it's really, for the most part, what we can tell um, has been a wash. And so um, the administrative team has done a really good job of, of providing that alternative route to learning. Um, with enrollment comes funding. And so, um, of course, we, you know, I, I would probably say that most, most educational institutions are concerned about enrollment, and we want to, to make sure our enrollment stays where it's at. Um, and so we feel good about where we're at um, financially. Um, uh, Board of Education and superintendents way before me have positioned all the public schools to be in really good shape. And so, um, and we continue to be in good shape. But um, as we all know, economically, uh, there has been a downturn. We've been really relying on gross production. Um, we are about, at this point, <clears throat> excuse me, 166,000 uh, below what we were last year. And so we don't anticipate ever catching up at this point. And so, you know, with all those uh, factors in mind, um, you know, we have to look at uh, financially what we can do. And, and one of those things is, um, you know, we always look at our, at our staffing size, we always look at our expenditures and travel, um, and so uh, at this point we've not had to make any of those tough decisions, but uh, certainly something that we review as an administrative team um, all the time. So, you know, I'm excited about our year. Um, we've, got a lot of, we've got a lot of exciting things ahead of us. I'm more hopeful each day. Um, I, I think that uh, our kids and our teachers understand that um, there's going to be obstacles and challenges ahead, but I, they want to be in school. And so um, I feel like that, that we are as prepared as we can be, um, and, and I look forward to uh, having those activities uh, for our students all year long. I think that by allowing those, the engagement in our classrooms increases exponentially. And, and I don't think we realize um, how important that is until we went online last spring and, and our students didn't have those activities to engage them in our classrooms. And so, um, again, I thank everybody for their support. Um, it's been challenging. We've had a great, our, our parents have been wonderful. Uh, one of the things that we asked this year is to, um, we asked parents to bring students to school and help us reduce the amount of students that we were transporting on the bus. Our parents have been wonderful. They've done a great job. Um, we've, we've been able to uh, distance students on our buses. Uh, now, the, the flip side of that, if you've had to be in, in a line, <laughs> the lines have been long. And, and uh, I took my daughter to school yesterday just to kind of see what it was like. And, and uh, they're making improvements. It's getting better every day. Uh, when we built, uh, you know, I, 
went to the neighborhood school, and you could, we all walked to school back then. And so it's a little different um, when you have uh, 200 cars lined up. That wasn't like we were when we were kids. And so, again, our, our site principals and teachers are, and, and support staff are working through those things, and it's getting better every day. Um, so, again, thank you um, for the opportunity to be here. Uh, if there are any questions, I would be happy to, to answer any of those before turning it over to Dr. Cunningham.
much, but we, uh, we do have a lot of them. And uh, our students were ready to be back. Um, online is, is good. It works for a certain population. Uh, it certainly works for older students who that's the only way they can uh, take advantage of higher education. But I'm going to tell you that 18 to 22 year old, uh, they like face to face and uh, they like the social interaction and all of that. And, and we just uh, over and over and over got comments about uh, you know, we, we want to be back. We're anxious to be back. We actually had students who never left, even through all of that, our dorms, uh, you know, students that didn't have any place else to go, students who told us we are safer here than if we go back home. So, you know, how do you answer that? You say, okay, we'll stay here and we'll, uh, we'll work with you on that. So, uh, we had a, a great... Um, task force led by Dr. Hannaford, uh, reopening task force administrators, faculty, students, our staff council uh, and professional staff council chair, our faculty senate president that worked uh, for several weeks during the summer kind of getting things ready, developing some policies and of course the masking uh, policy came out of that and um, when we actually voted, it was 100 percent. It was unanimous to go with the masking because, you know, we're uh, at the university level. Those are educated people. The science speaks to you, speaks to them, and uh, it, that it just didn't turn out being a, a big deal at all. I think, obviously, I don't like it. There are a lot of people's, you know, you just it's it's an inconvenience, and I developed this little lanyard thing because. In my office, I don't keep it on, but the minute I stand up and go to walk out, if I don't have this around my neck, I forget it. So uh, that way I can just, you know, put it on and comply in the hallways and so on. Our students have been very good. We're just a week in, and we think we'll have to keep reminding. Uh, you know, complacency might set in a little bit after a while. Um, we did a lot of things as far as moving classrooms around, kind of the domino effect. Uh, the ballroom has a full day's worth of classes in it uh, because that's one of our biggest rooms on campus. So our larger classes, we moved there. And then we were able to move the next largest to those rooms and, and so on. Uh, my president's leadership class meets in the ranger room where we used to meet in our conference room in Herod Hall. So anything that we could do to get that social distancing, we, we took chairs out of rooms, uh, chairs and tables, desks. We uh, put the blue X on chairs and we couldn't move them out, didn't have a place to store them. We just uh, identified them that way and our faculty and our, our students have been really good. We had a freshman orientation no, freshman orientation on Saturday and if you saw the picture uh, normally we take it around the ranger statue well we took it around the ranger at ranger field and socially distanced and with their mask. Uh, we had athletic orientation Monday night uh, Mr. Franz and his athletic administrators had uh, socially distance the stadium. So uh, there are, you know, little X's all through the stadium, and then we had to bring in some chairs because we just used the, the home side. But uh, those students were there. They were masked, even outside, and they were attentive to all of that. Uh, athletics has been a little bit of a, that's been one of those things that's been a moving target all the way through the summer and to the start of the semester. Uh, we are members of the Great American Conference, which is comprised of uh, six Oklahoma uh, and six Arkansas schools. And we uh, actually finally uh, met for our last meeting last Friday evening on Zoom at, at five o'clock, uh, took the recommendation from our, our ADs, our athletic directors, to suspend our fall and winter sports competitions through the end of December. And, you know, that's a really tough decision to make. Um, we were the last Division II conference in the country to make it. Uh, I think there was still, you know, that hope with, that we could uh, 
could safely do that, and it just came down to the fact that we felt like we couldn't. Uh, so no competitions, but the students have even accepted that. Uh, they've uh, pretty, you know, as Mr. Argo said, they're pretty resilient. Uh, we've told them that we're already trying to work on what spring might look like, and we might have uh, spring football games and spring volleyball and soccer and cross country and uh, so on. So uh, in that conference, we have Southwestern, Northwestern, uh, East Central, and Southeastern. So four of our Russo schools are in there with us, then Oklahoma Baptist and Southern Nazarene are the six Oklahoma. And it, it is a, a very good conference, works very well together. Right now, we're in the process of deciding exactly what kind of interaction the coaches can have with our students, uh, with our student athletes. And uh, again, we had uh, probably 75 football players here all summer long, uh, some in summer school, some not, but working out in the uh, weight room. Uh, very strict protocols on only so many in there at a time, had to be masked, they were screened every time with temperature checks and so on. And the fact that we didn't record any positive cases said a lot to me. It said that I think we can do this and we're certainly going to give it a shot. I told the students at freshman orientation and at the athletic orientation that you control it. You know, I'm the president of the institution, but I have very little control over what this semester is going to look like. The students and our faculty and staff are the ones who control it. And if they do the things we ask them to do, social distance, uh, mask, all of those things, then our chances of making it through the semester and the year are very good. And if they don't, <laughs> if they, um, the students have house parties and you know, forget the social distancing, then the, ch the chances go down significantly. So hopefully we can keep that up. And uh, just a little bit about enrollment, we're down. We knew, we, we very much planned for that, thought that we probably would be, I think, across the state. That seems to be the, the trend. Uh, we're definitely down at our two uh, distant campuses, Enid and Woodward. Those typically are older students, and I think that impacted uh, some decisions on going to school. Some may have laid out a semester. Uh, again, not knowing what their children, what they were going to have to do to meet their children's needs, and just a lot of things like that. So we're still in the process of enrollment, uh, but we're probably, I'm going to guess, a, probably in the 6 to 7% range down. So. That um, is not where we want to be because obviously that has a lot of impact on uh, resources. About, what is it, David, 72% of our uh, funding now comes from uh, student tuition and fees compared to what it used to be. It almost was the exact opposite with that amount being uh, provided from the state. So. Uh, total shift just in my career, my lifetime at the university. So uh, we're going to monitor it very closely. Uh, we uh, met with faculty, talked to them. We uh, didn't fill two faculty positions uh, going into this fall, um, an English and a uh, social science. And then we have another one opening open right now that we had planned to fill in the spring. We may not. We may have to look at it and evaluate it again going into next year. So we had hit uh, staff very hard in the years leading up to this one. Uh, so we had to look at some faculty uh, positions. But everybody seems to be pulling the same direction uh, on board with uh, decisions that we've made. We've tried to incorporate as many people as possible in those decisions. So uh, I'll answer any questions if someone has one. I don't have a question, but I've got a statement for both you and Mr. Argo. Okay. I've been in retail for about you know, 40 years. The last five years, the quality of kids has increased tremendously. Oh, for us. well, excellent. Especially the ones that are involved in athletics or extracurricular activities are wonderful. 
they, I think, no matter what, if it's athletics or or choir or band, uh, you know, they they've had to be a little more organized and be a little more uh, punctual and all those things. That I've noticed a total difference. Yeah. Like I say, very last good. Year. Thanks. That's a. We'll take it. Yes. Dr. Cunningham, have one question. So, if, yes. do you think enrollment across the entire state, all all higher ed, is going to be down? As I would say, we have this place called Southeastern <laughs> in Durant that has now a huge online graduate program, and they're up. Uh, yes, and I think the community colleges have been hit especially hard. I talked to uh, Dr. Cheryl Evans, who, of course, we know very well. Uh, at Northern, she said uh, most of the community colleges are down double-digit percentage. I just wondered if there was a chance the state legislature would reevaluate the funding that they send per student based on the fact that all universities would be down. I mean, it seems logical, right? <laughs> yeah, way too logical. <laughs> you're, you're using words in the same sentence. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, thank you, and thank you for thank you. having us. Well, on behalf of the Chamber and Dermot Insurance and Divine Water, <laughs> thanks for coming. You can stay here as long as you want. If you're here after nine, we'll put you to work. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's, uh, thank you both. For updating us on our schools, and I appreciate that very much. And enjoy a lot working with you. So, thank you. Until next, until next month, right? Yes. yes. Okay.